Welcome to the Daily World Friday. My name is Michael Schimke. I'm the CEO of Scafree. Um, we run this session here every Friday, 11 o'clock Central European Standard Time, to allow you, the audience, to ask questions about um, essentially anything data world relevant, data driven, uh, cloud computing, anything data driven is, is okay. Um, and yeah, all kinds of questions are allowed. You can use the chat here for uh, for uh, for um, for submitting live questions. Essentially, you can use the the chat, the Q and A here. You can use, uh, you just raise your hand virtually. I don't, well, well, yeah, that's a good point, actually. I don't see when you physically raise your hand, um, but you can virtually raise your hand and ask a question in life. I would give you voice and you can use a form. I'll show you afterwards um, uh, how you log into the form and submit your questions essentially for one of the next sessions. And it allows us to prepare a short slide essentially and mentally prepare for the question, right? But live questions is good as well. Um, if we receive multiple questions and at the moment there are a, a few open questions, and um, uh, yeah, I would essentially cherry pick one of them and um, depending on how they fit essentially. And um, yeah, time box, which means that um, we're looking at 10, 50 minutes roughly, um, and uh, which makes a good recording. Check out our YouTube channel where the good sessions end up on the, on the channel anyway. And if there will be no question at all, if the pipeline is empty ever again, then I'll talk about the cluster, here, which is in our personal basement. All right, but this time actually we received a question. So let me... Um, Open this up. So this is about reference tables. And um, the question is essentially about reference tables and reference hubs roughly. So what they do is they, they have a reference table. And remember, that's essentially you have, you have codes. Let's say ISO countries, uh, DEU for Germany, um, 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 uh, uh, DE for Germany, NL for um, the Netherlands, and so on, right? And then um, now the challenge is to historize this data. And yeah, they know the satellite pattern, a, a what we call a reference satellite. Um, remember, the in a standard satellite, the primary key is the hash key and the load date. Well, in a reference satellite, you don't have a hash key in a reference table, which means in a in a reference satellite attached to the reference table, you have essentially the code from the parent, which is the primary key in the reference table, and the load date. That's your primary key in a reference satellite. And that's the difference essentially. Um, all right, but what about reference hub table here? Is it effective to create table with just one column? And let me talk about how this essentially evolved over time. So in a book that I wrote with Dan, uh, we call the reference table reference table, and we have a reference satellite. But then in fully, the thing is this, and, and let me just draw this up maybe. Let me draw this up. So you have a reference table, the code, and then you descriptive attributes. Let's say the sort order, the abbreviation, the caption, and so on, right? That's your reference table, fat and white. All the attributes which you have in a reference table, you cannot really track um, changes to the reference data, right? Because if you update something or if you want to modify it, you have to update. And the update means you're losing the old version. And that's where the reference satellite comes into play. The reference satellite, that's the RT reference satellite is essentially attached to the reference table, shares the code from the parent and the load date timestamp. And then all the attributes you move into the satellite, let's say the, um, the caption, um, now would be uh, is where you essentially capture the changes to every, you, know, you capture every change to the data essentially, right? Just like in any ordinary satellite. And then the question is, in, for example, in fully audible environments, why would you keep some attributes in the reference table and not capturing any change to it? In, 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 in solutions or in environments where you don't care that much for audibility, that might be, it might be even desired to push a change. Let's say you're changing the default colors for your currencies and you're changing that for the euro from, let's say, black to blue. Well, you want to push that change even to the old reports, to, to the historical reports, right? So it might be a desired feature change to some extent. But in a fully audible environment, it's questionable, let's say, at, at the very least. So um, you would essentially, um, you want to capture every change to all the descriptive attributes on your reference tables, which means you're moving all the attributes up here down in a table. And that leads to the fact 
that you have no attributes anymore in the reference table. All of them are in a reference satellite. And that leaves us to only having a code in the reference table. And that's the, having only the code in reference table looks like a hub to some extent, right? Well, there's no hash key, there's maybe no load, no load date, no record source, but it's a list of codes. And that's why it's called also a reference hub. So in that scenario, the reference hub is an extreme version of the reference table. But on the other hand, it's the default these days, right? So it's, it's, it, that's how it evolved essentially. Um, yeah, I like to call it, I mean, yeah, the reference hub is an, is, a, is an extreme of a reference table, I would argue. I like to call it still a, um, a, a reference table, but uh, there's some comments here already from uh, GTIS. Yeah, I mean, reference hub, it, both the terms are good. That's, that's what it is, right? Reference table is, in, in my opinion, but it's really about opinions now, right? The reference table is more, more of a broader term, so it's more generalized. That's why I prefer it. That's the only reason I would say. Um, all right, so that's, that's the, the thing. And yes, um, now your argument is, or the argument on the, on the uh, slide was, does it make sense to have this table still? Because, I mean, it's just one column. Yeah, I mean, um, it gives you the granularity. That's one point, right? So it gives you the granularity for your dimensions, which you would derive from your reference tables or reference hubs. Um, but let me tell you what we do in, in projects a lot. And that's actually an upcoming feature for Data Vault for DBT, um, uh, roughly at least. Now, the idea is this. First of all, um, you could argue that the reference table is the latest version for every code in the reference satellite down there. So you could also argue, why do we have a reference table or a reference hub anymore? Why don't we just create a virtualized reference table on top of the latest delta from the reference satellite? So the, the reference setter is a materialized table where you capture all these reference data and the, uh, the, the reference setter is materialized and the reference table, the parent itself is just a view on its child in that sense, on its dependent object, right? So that's what we do a lot because then it's, it's convenient to have, the, um, to have the reference table as a view, um, giving you the latest state of the codes. So that's the default uh, that you want to use in your reporting. But if you need all the history, it's there in the reference satellite. That's all we do. Um, that's what we do a lot, actually, to be honest. And then um, you could also argue um, there would be multiple reference satellites typically involved. So you have, let's say you get um, country codes from different systems, let's say from SAP and from Salesforce and so on. All of them have their own definitions and they should be in line, right? But what if not? What if there's some deviations, maybe in the sort order, default colors, maybe in the, in the writing and the spelling of the country names and so on. Uh, errors, right? So the idea now is to have a reference table and the reference satellite per source system, right? Um, so per source system, you have a reference satellite and then you have typically, um, you, you manage your um, analytical reference data by yourself in MDM. MDM for us is just another source system. So it becomes another satellite, another reference satellite on the reference table. And now it's up to you how you define your virtual view on top, how you copy essentially uh, the attributes from all these systems for your default presentation um, downstream in your reports. Typically, the MDM, the, the reference satellite from MDM would win in many cases because that's where you control the sort orders by yourself for the analytical reports essentially, right? Um, but it's just, that's, Let's say just my experience. Let's say that. Um, all right, but that's the idea. So that's that's how we do it in a project these days. Um, we virtualize the reference table, and then it becomes a table again, right? Because it's not just a code list anymore. It's really a flat and white view entity. Let's let's argue. Let's 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 name it a reference entity then. Um, but it's still called the reference table for um, for legacy reasons, I would say. That's that's it. But it's flat and white. All the attributes, latest version is in the view that we want to present downstream. That's the idea. All right, cool. Let me just check the, the chat here. Yeah, in Vault Speed, they call it um, base reference table, the hub, and satellite on reference table is a satellite. Yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, it's uh, the reference hub. That's, the, that's how, it, how it evolved over time, uh, essentially, um, over the years, right? Um, yeah. <clears throat> and reference entity, yeah, that's that's correct. So that's the that's formally reference entity would be the um, 
the 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 parent table essentially, but then you could also argue a reference set is also reference entity, right? So let's let's leave it by that. We call it reference table the view on the parent, and the reference set is just a reference satellite. But there might be multiple per source system MDM. There might be even a distinction between raw data vault, um, and then you have we have um, a reference set in a business vault where we clean data or make some decisions essentially, right? Which codes to be used downstream? Um, we do this, for example, in currency conversions. Um, when we receive um, uh, exchange rates from a provider, but there might be gaps and there might be the wrong ratio and so on. So we have to, we, we have to optimize these codes, fill all the gaps and so on, optimize the rates, I mean, optimize the rates, fill all the gaps to make sure we have a high performance uh, uh, currency conversion downstream. So the, the incoming data set becomes a, is captured by a reference satellite in a raw data vault. The reference table defines all the currencies available. The reference satellites, all the exchange rates on the currencies that we received. And then we have a, um, a reference satellite in the business vault where we essentially provide the optimized uh, list of rates per currency, optimized for our leading currency, essentially, that we define for use uh, downstream, essentially. That's, that's the basic idea, I would say. All right, cool. Good question. Um, all right, so if you have a question like this, let me just share my screen again. Um, there you go. I think let me just double check if you answered everything. So is it effective to create table? Yeah, I mean, you. so you could have a reference hub table and we did this uh, a lot. Um, and it might be even required, even with the view, depends a bit on your technology, that you have a reference hub and then the reference table, the view, is the view essentially, right? So you have reference satellites, a reference hub to give you the granularity, and then the reference view just pre-joins all the attributes to the code and gives you the full spectrum, uh, the latest current state of the data essentially. Um, remember the reference hub gives you the granularity, so that could be of advantage when you join, that's the idea. Um, besides the system all in columns, yeah, it's, it's, that's not a story here. Do you have a record source and load date on reference tables? Yes and no. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Depends a bit on the users, I would say. I believe internally we don't have it. But um, yeah, that's where it is. All right. If you have a question like this, um, good question, actually. Actually, So um, thanks for that. Um, yeah, use this form, sfr.ee slash dbfriday. That's where you can submit your question. Upload some uh, uh, white paper photographs or something or diagrams if you want. And um, yeah, all good. Um, also check out our other webinars um, on DBT and um, Westscape. That's where you can essentially find um, experts once a month talking about um, the tools and some tips and tricks essentially. And one more announcement. Um, yeah, make sure you mark your calendar um, 10th of October and 11th of October. Uh, that's when the Data Dreamlands uh, happens again in Hanover. I don't have a link, but uh, check out this um, QR code here or our website at scalefree.com. That's where you find the, the um, information about the conference as well. Um, we're currently looking for speakers. So if you have some interesting topic, interesting um, project that you want to submit, uh, send us an email. Um, you will find, um, I mean, yeah, uh, you'll find one, uh, just contact at scalefree.com would work and uh, people will f uh, forward it essentially. Contact at scalefree.com and uh, check out if you can make it to Hanover next uh, this year in October on the 10th of 11th of October. Would be nice to see you there. Cool. Thanks for joining today. Um, hope you have a nice weekend. Um, and yeah, wish you all a good week and weekend and see you next Friday, 11 o'clock. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining today. If you'd like to discuss this further, give us a call on the number below here and we're happy to discuss this with you. See you next time. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.